Hello, folks. This is Michelle Allman and Alex Allman with the Red Notebook Podcast. We are back again today, sitting down, mother daughter, chit chatting a little bit about family, faith, and business. And today we did a little traveling actually over the weekend. We visited my Quick middle trip. daughter, a little trip <laughs> in and out, San Diego. We went to visit Samantha, who is my middle daughter. She is at University of San Diego studying marine biology. Um, my, she's, she's the one with the brains yes, in the family. She's let's our just say. smart little peanut. Um, and in that trip, it was kind of fun because it was the whole crew. We started talking about uh, the Texas dark sky. So we, we're here in Dripping Springs, Texas, which is a certified dark sky community, which is cool. And let's just say that is awesome coming from where we were at. We were in the suburbs of Chicago. And if you've ever been there, you know you can't see any stars except for the brightest ones. Here you could see everything. Right, so you got like lots of light pollution. Full there. 360 view of the sky yeah, here. You can really you see You can it. almost see the curve of the earth here. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Which it's is pretty the most amazing. Wild stuff. So we strongly encourage anyone listening to come visit Dripping Springs because it's pretty awesome. But um, in that conversation, we were talking about aliens. So my favorite topic. Yes, yeah, so this I is going to be topic. this is going to be all about Alex's passion to talk about aliens. I get sucked down these wormholes though, and that's why I get this passion for this stuff because I just end up like going down this trail of one video after the next on YouTube. And I'm sure if you watch YouTube, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You start on one and you end up on like the hundredth suggested video on this Mm -hmm. topic. Which is the danger. (laughs) Yeah. Because I found myself up at 2 a.m. sitting there watching this stuff. So we're talking about like how it's totally impossible for us not to be the only life forms out there. And they've definitely discovered us. Like a hundred percent, they've been here. So what? So what makes you think that? Like, what well, is it you've that. been watching? There's no way that it's okay. So several things I've been watching. Mm-hmm. I totally forgot his name, which is not going to help anybody if they want to watch this video. But is a he's a scientist who used to, I believe, used to work for NASA or used to work for the government, the secret agency that the government has on yeah. aliens at Area 51. And he says that basically all of the government officials know about this. There's all these secret little missions that happen, um, a lot of corruption, which I'm sure we all know. Yeah. U.S. politics, corruption is just everywhere. But he said that there's a lot of secret groups where certain politicians, like he even mentioned Bush Sr. is a part of this. Yeah. Clinton's a part of this. No surprise. So a part of what, though? Like so it's a, a group of-, of people that are working with people at Area 51 are in the military and they're using them for these projects. They're studying alien life. They basically, what he says is we already know 90% of the things that people suspect they're true, but the government's just not telling us. They're not letting us know about any of this stuff, which this is not a new concept. Right. People have been saying this since like what the sixties. So this is some guy you saw on YouTube. Yeah. Well, so you know, Logan Paul, Yeah. the podcast, he had him on there. They were they were kind of treating him like a joke. Yeah. Because you've seen Logan's podcast. Sometimes they take the guests seriously. Other times they're making fun of them without yeah. the guests knowing they're Got making it. fun of them. So he kind of was making fun of him throughout the entire time. But the guy had no idea that Logan's using him as a joke. So I think that a lot of the people were processing this as this might not be real. But I right. saw a lot of things that I was like, whoa, that's freaky that he would even know that stuff. Right. So, you know, it might or might not be true, but this is where I get my facts from. (laughs) And he was just talking about how they have these secret projects where they've created, like we have, the U.S. has these UFOs that look like alien spaceships because they've made attempts to go further than just the moon. They've made attempts to go out to... The U.S. has. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Or the world in general. Like the earth, people on earth have made these attempts. To get outside. They've created this technology. Solar system. He said that basically if the U.S. would release all the information they have, we would be like a thousand years ahead of what we think we're at right now. What do you think it is, though, that keeps them from... Why not? Control. Control. Control the technology? Humans. Controlling humans. Oh, okay. They don't want us to know, like, all these possibilities. Got it. Because what his theory is, is that they're using this as a way to keep oil, coal, and natural gas is relevant. Okay. Because he says with the technology that they've discovered and that they've built, it would completely wipe out. these industries. It would wipe them out. Like, there would be no more oil use. We wouldn't have to use it anymore. Because basically what he's saying is they've found ways to, like create energy sources out of things other than that 
Um, but th- once they got further into the podcast, you kind of think this guy might be a little bit loopy because right. he showed them a picture of what he said was an alien. And if you look at the picture, it's like, you have no idea what this is. It's like a right. big, huge light thing. And like, you can't, right. there's no body. It's just right. like a big light. Energy. Yeah. It's like a light. So it could be anything, but I don't know. Like that stuff gets me thinking. Right. And that's where I like, you got to take everything with a grain of salt. But like when you look at the sky and you're yeah. sitting there for like at least two there seconds. There has to be something. When you're looking at all the stars, if you think about it, every star has a possibility to be a sun of another uh, solar system. Right. And if we have nine planets, is Pluto considered a planet still? I don't I know. I think if we have nine planets in our know. solar system, think yeah. about all the other stars out there. What, how many other planets yeah. there could be? You cannot tell me. With the tens of millions, even billions, maybe trillions of planets out there, that there's not other There's life. not something. But then, so, all right, let's otherwise, take that, we would be like an anomaly. Like, what are we then? But then let's take that conversation into a deeper one, which leads to the conversation around faith, right? Yeah. And the conversation around spirituality. This is very much connected to. Yeah, it is connected because if you think about it, life on earth like what is created life so yes. when, when we talk about something sa- crazy like special. like um the environment we talk about saving the planet yeah. i mean the truth of the matter is the words saving the planet are are really referencing the idea that we care for mother earth yeah right? when in the truth is it's not that we're saving the planet because the planet doesn't need be, to be saved we need to save ourselves. And here's yeah, exactly. The it's point, a, it's point human to that. preservation. Right. It's not saving the planet because the, the planet the, will shake us off. Like, I was going to say, if the planet's going to destroy itself, it's going to destroy itself. It'll destroy us first. Yeah. And, and nature is more powerful than anything we can dream of. One, if you think about it, I think that humans were meant to be on Earth. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Why would we be here if we weren't meant to be well, on like planet? Well, like anything on Earth. So this this is going to get deep. And it's really just open discussion. It's not like yeah. an opinion or a... No, it's because this stuff speaking is Speaking in fact. It's mm-hmm. about thinking. This it's is like... 90% of this is going to be like theory, so... Well, it's, we're not scientists, yeah. nor are we experts in any of this stuff. It's really just what normal people that have limited exposure yeah. think. And what we're exposed to is a half fiction, half fat. Who knows, yeah. right? we have no I mean, idea, really. But it's, I'm sure a lot of people think about this stuff. When you, mm-hmm. when you stop and think, like, why? So our, the human body only lasts so long. Yeah. It's only built to last so long, yeah. right? I mean, muscles so wear far. out, skin... And then technology changes that. But then when, where did the technology come from? And then how is it that it's like compounding interest, Mm -hmm. right? So you, so you can earn money way faster when it compounds, Mm -hmm. when you have the company, it's like compounding technology or mind, mind share, you know, whatever, where the technology went from this slow development to all of a sudden in like less than a decade, we go from having a phone with a curly cord in the, in, you know, your car to carrying around a massively powerful computer. Yep. And then the unintended consequences of some of the Uh technology, like cell phone towers. Yeah. You know, now we're installing 5g Mm -hmm. and I think about it because we have a tower on our property, you know, and you think about like, okay, it all sounds awesome. We're connecting fast. Like we can do all this stuff wireless. Yet we don't think about that there are radio waves, like yep. all this stuff floating around in the air. Well, there's no avoiding that either. Like no. you can't run from that. And I had read something, and again, we should we should make a note of referencing the, the people we yeah, talk we about. Yeah, we should. But, we'll make note um, of that next Yeah, time. we'll <laughs> add it in the description somewhere. We'll go back and look. But I had read something about the fact that birds are dying, like yeah. that bees are dying. No, it was bees. So the... Talking, going all the way back to the, to the original discussion about aliens and life in other planets. And then how did life start on Earth? And how is it that this one planet yep. in this gazillions of planets is the only planet created perfectly to sustain what is what we think of as life, life yeah. right? Now, we think of life as flesh and blood and, and muscles and like talking Moving and organisms thinking and, and organisms yeah. that have that have patterns of behavior Mm -hmm. and you know the human evolved to the point of being functional strategic and then thinking about thoughts i mean the only thing that makes us different than an animal is that we can think about about our thoughts thoughts. yep because other animals feel they they're all based on like um uh instinct right but there the truth is that other animals actually have feelings yeah you know, 100%. dogs have feelings. I mean, you. Can... I mean, I still think cats are sitting there ready to kill you at any time. Yeah, That's my. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm not a cat lover. Sorry, but 
They're just looking at you like, yeah, girl, if I were bigger, I'd slice your face up. Oh, I wish that's what Milky was thinking because mm-hmm. she just wants to cuddle me all the time. Yeah, she's she's looking at you going, you'd be so tasty if I were just I a little bit she's bigger. I bet. She's sizing me up. But anyway, <laughs> you know, the whole, the whole fact that humans, you know, what makes us human is not only our ability to think about thoughts, but mm-hmm. it's our souls. Yeah. And if that weren't true... When we die, and you, if it, as horrible as it is to go to an open casket funeral, which yeah. I've been to many with grandparents and yeah. such, but when you see somebody and they're, they're you see their body, they look and they've different. been preserved, and they've they're they've got the makeup on, and they they look soulless. Yeah. they're empty. You could tell they're you empty, tell, yeah. and and I mean the you know so the whole conversation like there's life on other planets but then what is life and what do we define life? Well, and if you think about the endless amounts of possibilities, there could be other things like us exactly. There, there could be five hundred times. There could be other dimensions exactly. Though. So it's not just like life on other planets. No, and there's the time. There's little you know, time loops warp. and there's like in space, like with a black hole and stuff. Right. They talk about like if you enter a black hole and you make it out to the other side, you're in another time. Right. Like you and you can't make it back. It's freaky. And if you think about it, like because, you know, when scientists talk about life, it could be like a tiny little organism that lives underneath the right. ground in water. But with the millions and billions of other planets out there, there has to be at least one other that's smarter than us or one other that is more advanced than us. There has to be. There has to be. So well, there like, has to be, but it may not be in the form that we define life as. And I think we've seen, you know, you see movies and yeah. Star Trek and Star Wars and all that, and everything looks human-ish. We humanize everything because that's how we relate. And legs and all that, right. yeah. And you may have a weird head or yeah. whatever. But we we humanize everything in order to relate to it. Yeah. We humanize animals in movies to relate. You know, yes. it's it's part of the process. But Which I think, there, though, like, even with that concept, there definitely has to be something out there that we could relate to. There's got to be. Because if you think about it, like, there, the reason that Earth is so perfect to have the life that it does have is because of its position to the sun. True. So it gives it's it the, the ability. Yes. So with... That being said, if you look out at the sky and see all those stars, there's got to be another star that has a planet in a similar position to ours. So there's got to be some sort of similar, if not parallel, like almost identical, but maybe just a little bit different because of where it is in the universe. There's got to be something that is parallel to us that is similar. Like we could even speak to these things. Like if someday we got advanced enough, we could speak to them. I bet you that there's similarities between the nature of their um, like culture and ours. Yeah. Because, oh, I don't know. Like this, that goes even further into like a crazy deep conversation. But then, then going back to the faith conversation, That's right? what I was going to say. Okay. It goes back to like your belief in a higher power. Right. Because the universe we, was created. We were choice, chosen. They, they have, like scientists have an age for the galaxies and like what's everything right. out there. Like there was nothing until something happened. Right. Where does that something come from? Right. Where does something start? And scientists start? cannot explain. Like, sure, they can explain a, a star explodes and whatever, but where does that star come from? Right. And why? And where does and that how- explode? Like, it, there has to be something past the explainable. Yes. Something before the explainable, there's something there. And this is where the limitations of the human mind come in, where we, where we have to rationalize what we can't explain. Yes. We can't yep. settle. And it's it's an intriguing thing because it... The whole idea of the way the human brain works and how it, it ev- like how it grows and the phases we go through as mm-hmm. we mature as a human being yeah. and how the brain matures and knowing that it is virtually impossible, if not proven to be impossible for the human brain to sit in a question yeah. without an attempted answer, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So the unknown is not, is not possible. Yeah. Like it, Humans we are in a quest. Everything they come up with something to explain it all. Well, in the brain, it's almost like the survival instinct, you know. Yeah. And I, I speak only in theory. Yeah. Again, no science here. No, it's just simply what I've read. And, yeah. But if the human brain can't sit in question, and we're on a constant quest for the answer, mm-hmm. you know, this is the issue around the unexplained, and why yeah. we try to create explanation around what's unexplainable. Yeah. And you know, and then it, it's. I'm a person of faith, I believe, and, and here's why. I believe that there is God, and I believe that there is um, 
power in that because it it's more about living in that context mm -hmm. creates a moral structure well the and you moral... know what because life ends because mm -hmm. it's not forever everybody wants something to look forward to at the end nobody right. wants to live their life and think like to that die was it? and then it's dark right you know like nobody wants to think when i when my heart stops and i stop breathing it's just gonna be pitch black right. nobody wants to think that right nobody wants to believe that and like where I, this is going to go a little bit of a turn here because I just had a thought in my head. Because one of Chase's friends is he claims to be an atheist. Mm -hmm. And I always question, I always, you know, I, I'm intrigued because I, we didn't grow up in a church. I didn't grow up in an organized sector of a religion. Mm -hmm. I grew up believing in God. I grew up believing in there has to be something bigger than me. There has to be something bigger than the earth and the universe. But I don't have a set um, I set deal. of rules. Yeah, like I don't have a, I don't have a box. So I mm -hmm. live in this like zone where when I come in contact with people that have different beliefs, I'm instantly intrigued because I'm like, great, awesome, I can learn something. Right. So I ask questions, and when I ask him about this stuff, instead of giving me a, an answer, he diverts and he changes the subjects. So I every mm. time I ask, I try to ask in sections and like randomly, right. I ask like about a thought process. I'm not questioning him and saying like you shouldn't be atheist. I just question like. So what do you believe in? And he always diverts. He changes a subject. And I think it's because he's afraid because he, he doesn't, doesn't know an anything. Answer, right? he, well, because he doesn't have an answer for any of it. So in his own head, he probably struggles with the idea like, what really, what is it? Like, right. what is it to be an atheist? What right. do I actually have belief right. in? Because, you know, like, and I guess the definition of an atheist is you believe in, in nothing. But you don't believe in nothing. You believe in atheism, yeah, which is, in, in fact, its own religion it's kind to of, some it's extent. It's kind of strange, right? you know? Because, like, he, there's no real, like, backup to that. It's just that it can't be proved. God can't be proved, so that's why he doesn't believe in God. That's which the goes answer back he gives to, me. goes back to the need for rationalization. Well, but and, then when you give, like, examples. Because mm -hmm. you've seen on Facebook those miracle videos where, like, mm -hmm. there was one I watched literally yesterday where it was a little girl who had a really severe virus. And she her heart actually stopped for, like, several minutes. So she was gone. And they revived her. And when she came back, she was telling her parents, she's like two or three, just old enough to talk. She's telling her parents that she spoke to her grandma. She spoke to her grandpa. Like, she's telling these vivid memories and this yeah. is instantly after she's brought back right and she's telling her parents like please don't like don't leave my side again like i don't i don't want to go back and it was weird because when her parents were asking her like was it a good experience she said yeah i talked to grandma and grandpa but i don't want to go back right it was weird yeah. that she even had the ability to like because kids you know they make up a lot of stuff but at the end of the day like is that made up or is those things things that are really happening that as adults we learn to mute and forget because, like, yes. I had a lot more experiences as a kid with, like, uh, I don't want to say, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, supernatural. Right. But I had experiences where I felt something. Like, this is something that's followed me. Light street lights yeah. turn off a lot when I drive past them. Interesting. Like, and this happens all the time. And Chase actually started noticing it. And he's hmm. like, that was weird. Did that just turn off? I go, yeah, probably. He's like, why are you so casual about that? I'm like, because it's happened to me since I can remember. Like, since I can remember, streetlights have started turning off every time I, I pass them. I don't remember you ever telling me that. I probably haven't because I kind of like forget about it and then I get reminded again because it happens. Like the other day I was leaving the neighborhood and the gate light turned off. And I go, oh, that's somebody watching me. And Nan always tells me that yeah. she asked Grandma Mimi to watch us. And I, I told you about that experience yeah. I had with yep. seeing her when I right. was really, really sick. She helped yep. me to the bathroom. I don't even know how I got on this tangent, but... But see, now, I believe that. I believe... And here's why. Because, again, this really does tie all together. Yeah. When you talk about this, the massive scale of the universe mm -hmm. and beyond the universe and other universes and other solar systems and the fact that all of this is energy. Yeah. And he, every life form mm -hmm. is a form of energy. And energy it doesn't manifests. die. It manifests. Ener energy does not die. Yeah. So we d never die. Yeah. Our bodies... And our, the, capsules. And the, our capsules yeah. die, but that's where the whole spirituality thing comes in. And, and spirituality takes form in all kinds of different ways. Yeah. You know, faith, faith, in my opinion, isn't, you know, we talk about organized religion. Organized yeah. religion is the foundation of what is now politics. Mm -hmm. Organized religion is the foundation of what is, is society. Yeah. You know, so it dates back to the beginning of mankind. Beginning, yeah. And that's where war has always played and will always be. And we will never escape it yeah. because it is. 
it is the foundation of yeah. how we formed, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if energy is everything and energy never dies, our thoughts yep. create things mm -hmm. that float around out there. Well, if you think about it, where does it go, you know? Well, and this is, you go back to spirits mm -hmm. and souls. And if, if there are, there's evil out there yeah. and there are people that, that are, they simply are exuding mm -hmm. the negative energy, yeah. even the negative thoughts that we have, and they go out there. Now, wh what's to say yeah. that those, that energy isn't, it's a life form of its own, yeah. right? And so it's out there and now it's floating around. That's like birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. And why you have to eliminate toxic people from your life. Yeah. Because what happens when you collect yep. and that negativity collects into a life form? Yeah. It, it becomes a life form, right? Yeah. And so you think about that and you know, that the, this, these negative thoughts become something yep. and they collect. And that's, you know, in, in my opinion, again, this is just complete theory, <laughs> but it's our need to rationalize is that when you collect around people that are positive and funny and happy and joyful and you know yeah. it creates a life form around that mm -hmm. and that that is a pleasant place to be yeah. it is what would be living in happiness right yeah. and then the same thing applies with the negativity yeah there was a point in there that i was getting to that was <laughs> like you had talked about like the what were we talking about? Where it was like, you know, our bodies, the organized religion thing, you know, the, that those are rules. And with atheism, mm. you know, and someone's lack of belief in anything, or no, going back to, to souls and like, yeah, man, it's easy to jump <laughs> this around. This is one of those type of topics though, that like causes you to yeah. go to so many, so many tangents. Areas. Yeah. But like when you have this energy, there's something about you. And, and it's almost like the naming thing. You know, when you're a parent, mm -hmm. I know a lot of parents plan in advance. They have it all laid out, yeah. you know, and it's some, I'm more that like what, what came popped into my head was the names that we chose. Yeah. So when, yeah. yeah. So when you were born, we thought about it, but how I felt with you was Alexandra and Alexandra as a name is, um, savior of the mankind. savior of mankind you know yeah. and so like the meaning behind names yeah and so you think about it like you think about the reasons that we are placed in mm -hmm. certain places the reasons when you think when you talk about like people become sometimes people are atheists because they had such a horrible experience yeah. as a child like how could it be how could anyone yeah. be evil how could how could people you know or you become that way because you see such horror or you lose trust in god right like you lose trust in because i think with like movies and tv shows and like the glamorization of religion people look at god as someone to go to to help them with their problems which not to say that he's not but um i think that a lot of people expect like if you pray for something for example right like let's say your grandma's sick and you pray that she doesn't pass you say god please don't take her from me now but it's her time to go and god takes her right are you going to be angry at god that she right. she left earth or right. are you going to accept the fact that that was the plan that was the plan that was the answer so i think a lot of times right. with atheists there's one of two things that happens either they're just doing it because they want to be different and i feel that genuinely yeah like i've talked to some people, people like and i'm like they're just trying it's to like someone saying and i'm sorry but this is how i feel some people saying like i'm a socialist no you're not Unless you've lived in that a yeah. socialist in environment, unless you understand truly yeah. what that is like, you're not. Well, it, so I that, think they take it as like, there's two different ways. One, they were really upset by something that happened in their life that they thought God should have taken care of for mm -hmm. them. Like the passing of a family member, being really sick and not being able to overcome the sickness, something like that, where right. they were begging and pleading with God to help them and they felt like they didn't receive that help. Right. Or they're just trying to be different. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times like with Chase's friend he's trying to be different he's right. trying to be a little angsty and oh i just want to tell you that i poke, don't believe in poke something. society a little and bit, not to yeah. say that there's not people out there that truly don't believe this stuff because i'm sure there are but the majority i think are either angry that they didn't get what they wanted from god or are trying to be different and angsty and to speak to that what i don't understand about it is when there are organizations or, or groups or there's communities that that have um wonderful things happen and this is what i really don't understand why does it matter why if a community chooses to pray oh yeah after a, a football game or before you know whatever why 
would it matter to anybody else if they're not forced to do anything? Yeah. I Why would it matter that people want to be grateful? Yeah. You know, that is something I cannot get my head around and I, I'm not okay with it. I'm not well, okay because with... because if you think about it, humans naturally want every... Like, we naturally want people to agree with us. So, like, if you're looking at a person in a position of power and the majority is not agreeing with you or they're following something that's not right. of your belief system, people want to put a stop to that because they think their beliefs are right. And I'm not saying that about everybody or every religion, but there's a lot of people that believe that their faith, their thought process is the only right answer. Yeah. So, like, for example, like, Chase and I were at a park one day eating breakfast, and these guys walked up to us, and they were, like, one of those church things where they try to recruit people and, like... Oh, the Latter-day Saints. Whatever. Right. I don't even know if that's what they were. It seemed less serious. It seemed more of, like... It was very much a planned conversation. Like, mm -hmm. they targeted us, and they sat down originally as if they were just, like, trying to have a con They asked us where we were from. They said... I said, Chicago. He's like, oh, me too. So we sat down without us, like, inviting him. And it, I was like, okay, this seems cool, whatever, I'll talk to the guy. And it just slowly progressed. Like, this was a very planned conversation. Right. And at the very middle, he had gotten so deep that I looked over at Chase and I'm thinking, like, this is weird. Yeah. And he, like, had pulled out this book. Oh, silence on the set. What are we doing Sorry. here? Sorry. He had pulled out this, like, booklet and he was teaching us, like, all these things. And I at first it was kind of cool because the, the way that it was formatted was very casual, very, mm -hmm. like hip with the times like he was trying to be cool with us and it got so involved that i started to get weirded out and then at the end when they had grasped us because i had like gotten a little emotional because he was relating god to your life right, and right, like doing right. all that stuff in a way that was relatable and towards the end he's like well i want to baptize you we want you to come to our church with us and i, I looked at chase and i was like oh no nope mm -hmm. we're not doing this this sounds like a movie this sounds like one of those movies where you get in that trailer and you yeah. never come home yeah so i looked at chase and i'm like and the guys are like oh what's the problem we'll get you new clue new clothes we'll get you all this stuff and i was like nope i'm good i've been baptized before i'm okay with god i feel like yeah. this is the end of our conversation and they got really offended and we got up to walk away and they're following us to the car like begging us to be baptized and I'm sitting there like, I already told you, like, I've been baptized. I really appreciate your lesson today, but this is right. taking it too far for me. Right. And he's like, well, you know, like, there's a lot of people that feel that way. You might just be feeling like you're at odds with God and right. maybe you're not at peace. You need to feel at peace. I'm like, oh, I'm at peace. Yeah. I'm just not at peace with this. This is making my heart race here. So if you could just <laughs> walk Take away, a step back, please. Sir. And yeah. I, I don't even know how I got to there, but people like that, like, he was so, at the end, they were super cool. But when I said no... It turned into like, well, why not? Yeah. You, uh, you felt this way. You got emotional. Right. Like I taught you a lesson. Why not? And I'm thinking to myself like, this is really weird. It Humans is the, are weird. We are. The nuance of that. And so like, you know, I'm thinking about what we're talking, you know, saying like, it's cool to be you. Do you? Yeah. And that, you know, having differences of opinion is what makes this world remarkable. Yeah. However, in the same regard, it's like there are lines that we've created in society you don't cross because then it becomes predatory yeah. you know like it's one thing i can disagree someone you know i said earlier that i disagree with socialism i 100 percent do yeah that doesn't mean that someone can't have an opinion and i might not i might like them as a human being we're going to disagree 100%. and i'm not okay with like i don't want to live in a socialistic country mm -hmm. which is why we're in the united states right well, you know what so, i think a lot of what you were saying before about like praying the reason it bothers people so much to pray after football games is because there's this idea that religion coincides with something negative right in today's for world, some people for there's, some people but, and it seems like that's what the media has kind of shifted to is like because they're they're of faith or of a religion they think this about this group right and that's with like i've noticed that with any religion people come after muslims like all muslims for certain things that a small group of muslims do same thing with christians people come at christians for things right. that small groups of christians do so then it turns into this belief that everyone of that faith yeah. is like this well and it's how again it goes back to human nature and how easy it is to manipulate yeah you know and and this is if you watch for anyone, and I strongly make a recommendation, is to read anything on neuro linguistic programming (NLP). NLP is an incredibly powerful tool that uses language to persuade. Right? Mm -hmm. Tony Robbins, um, most of his therapies, most of the his his positivity is 
his self-help stuff is based in NLP. So it can be used in very powerfully positive ways. It can also be used in very negative ways. Yeah. And so if you watch the media, if you watch, and I don't care what you watch, but if you watch it, you will see it in action. Yeah. You will see them, the, the ability to create groupthink, to create segregation in mindset, to... It's like a cult. Well, and, and what ends up happening is that you see it and it becomes... When in reality, if you were to sit with someone and not even tag or label anything, yeah. right, and just have a conversation, you could probably work through a disagreement. You could probably 100%. talk about different ideas, strategize, you know, say, hey, I see it this way, I see it this way, learn from each other. That's how human human beings interact. Mm-hmm. But when we, the power of, of tribal mindsets, the power of, of putting people in a group yeah. and holding them in it, and this is, it kind of goes back to this aggression when you disagree. Yeah. One of the, the tools and manipulation tools in any group is to create fear yeah. of, of fear of fear being outside. left out fear of being um you know ostracized mm-hmm. fear of being attacked you know a lot of times stop for a second and think if have you ever stopped yourself recently of putting something out there your opinion your belief for fear of what someone else would think oh yeah of course which is which is scary, yeah. You know, and so the, a lot of I think a lot of what happens and what we see isn't really how people feel. It's what's yeah. been created. Yeah, it's a you know, and it's like if you take a minute to step back and go, wait a minute, I'm not going to let somebody do that. I'm not going to. What I used to tell you guys when you growing up and when you know the fear of being picked on and all that kind yeah. of stuff, and I'd say, that's you own your power. Yeah, everything you have is inside. You don't give that away. Yeah, you don't let somebody decide for you Mm -hmm. how you're going to feel about yourself those are your choices you know and now to totally tangent into another topic which this ties around like don't give away your power yeah one of the the i think the greatest atrocities that happens here it's not poverty the united states doesn't know poverty no not like other countries that poverty is is here you know it's there is um horrible situations yeah but when we're talking about like real poverty yeah you don't have a satellite dish and say that you have poverty yeah you know homelessness is is right now not about poverty it's not about a lack of resources i mean that you can throw money at at all kinds of things it doesn't fix it yeah um there are there are some horrible things that are that that happen no darn it <laughs> See, it's that senior moment again. Dang, nab it. Senior, yeah. What was right. I? I was. You were talking about how um, the U.S. doesn't know poverty. Well, like that's the rest not. Of the that's world. not. That wasn't the point, though. Shoot, man, I hate it when that happens. See, this Did is you just stop? Thing. Like your thought just yeah, like the, the. I was getting there, and I went too far in the tangent. You know, you ever yes. do that where yes. you're, you're getting there and you just go too far in the You tangent. went too much detail. And oh, not this is it. This is it. There we go. One of the things that I think is unfortunate is that we've, certain communities have been taught to give, have been manipulated to give away their, their power. power. Yeah. And what I mean by that is the belief that someone else is going to fix it for you yes. or that someone's going to give it or that some, something is owed to you yeah. when in truth, the incredible waste of human talent that sits in some of these communities that they've been um, manipulated into believing yeah. that, that there's no way out. That do you someone think owes them that something? that's human nature in general, though? I know I that do. I in do. certain countries, like in North Korea, for example, you don't even have the ability to think for yourself, so it might be a little different there. But like in general, in places that are somewhat similar to the U.S., obviously governments are different and policies are different, but I think it's human nature that there's going to be groups of people that believe that they're owed the solution without having... I don't having... think you're born thinking that, though. Yeah, it's definitely a learned behavior. I really behavior. don't think you're it's born thinking It's definitely learned that. behavior. I think that, you know, nature versus nurture, right? Yeah. So in the... Well, the nature... actually, if you think about it, now that you said nature versus nurture, nurture, on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the base level of need, like the highest, most important level, the foundation for it all is emotional um, support and emotional love and affection and all that right so if you're missing that giant chunk if you think about how that's going to affect the rest of the pyramid yeah. it's like basically dominoes where one thing falls over the rest does so if you think about it if someone is born into a family where the parents show no emotion no love or they're they abandoned are cold right how you, that person now has to take a path of 
either following what's going to be set out for them, which is probably not the greatest, or making their own way. And that's got to be something within the human themselves. That yeah. can't, that's not necessarily like, I'm born with it and you're not. It's like they have to find it in themselves. That is such a good point. So baby's failure to thrive is usually, you know, a failure to thrive is when you don't have the affection. Like there's no touch. There isn't. Some humans were and this is where it goes back to god and faith and and the purpose of your existence on the earth yeah like why would god allow a child a baby Mm -hmm. to be abused yeah why is that why is that even possible and that's something that people and there's no answer right there isn't an answer to that like there is no good explanation yeah. other than evil exists yep, and that, that a human being. Well, because where there's good, there's evil. And if God is what we look at as the good, there's yeah. got to be an evil. There has to be some sort of place where the negative, um, nasty, evil energy comes from. And it cannot, yeah. you cannot live in a world where it's just positive energy. And I think that for when you think about like what your purpose is and and why you were placed in certain situations and when you know we pray and those prayers don't come true Mm -hmm. or they don't knowing that maybe they did but it wasn't the outcome that we that we we saw in our heads maybe the the intent was it's kind of like that um that picture that shows a set of footprints and it's along the lines of, you know, it was my darkest time. Why, why weren't you with me, God? And he says, I was carrying you. You know, it's, it's that, it's that there are times when it may seem like, why are we struggling? When in fact, that was the point. It was intended. It was the lesson. It was the, you know, it's something I, I tell Adam all the time where he gets super frustrated or things keep happening. I'm like, stop. What was the lesson? Yeah. Did you, things are repeating because maybe you didn't take what you were, was intended for you to learn in that moment. I think a lot of people moment. also look too far into the, I do this all the right. time, but we look too far into the future. True. Look way too far yeah. ahead. Like, why are you thinking about? Well, and some, and the whole thing, like the secret, you know, all that stuff. You can't just go, I there wish, no I wish, secret. I wish, and it all happens. There's no secret. No, the secret is hard work. The secret is there's no secret. <laughs> the Get secret your butt is, up. is that you live, that you do the right thing. And sometimes, oh, here we go again. Oh my gosh. And this is so far off from aliens, but you know what? The conversation at aliens leads to other things, and but this it is where it led. It isn't that far off <laughs> because it's, it's not about because life. If you think about like right? where the it's universe and like everything out there started, it kind of revolves back to what we're talking about right now. Yeah, it's just. But I think, um, you know, when when you think it goes back to the energy conversation. You know, the reason that we talk about like the, things like the secret and manifesting and all that. And yeah, I'm the one. I, I download those like. You know, theta rhythm. Is real and, though. Well, yeah, Not in you the can, sense that you hum and like bang a bunch of bowls and it's going to make something happen. It's like no, but you, you visualize. You tell your brain. Right. You sit there and you tell your brain, "This is what I want to achieve." Right. And you tell yourself that every day. Yep. While you're telling yourself that, you're actively during the 24 hours that you're alive every day, you're working towards what's going to get you to that point. It's not necessarily, I'm just going to think I'm going to do it, not do any work at all, and just hope it goes there. That's not manifesting. No. Manifesting is just constantly reminding yourself, looking in the mirror and saying, you will be that. You will, and right. then you do the work to get right. to the, that and point. And that's the thing, is you have to do it. Yeah, you have to take no action. Yeah, there's no secret recipe. There's yeah. no secret sauce. The YouTube no. videos telling you you're going to be a millionaire in a day, they're not true. Don't buy their seminar. Don't buy their little that is stupid something that Chrome is funny. extension. Yeah. It's not going to work. I'm sorry. No. I fell for that trap once with the Amazon scheme. Everyone wants the easy way out. Oh. I mean, everyone wants the path of least resistance, because why wouldn't you? Nature takes the path of least resistance. Yeah. Why do you, that's how rivers well, are. It's all about working smarter, not harder, but the key word is working smarter, not harder. Not, let me search on internet how I can make a million dollars in a day and hope it happens, because that's not going to happen. No. I don't think one billionaire in this world has ever made their billions overnight. No. And And unless you won the lottery, and usually that doesn't work out for you. Well, and they always say behind every overnight success is years of work. Yes. Because it wasn't overnight. No. All those singers you see that pop up, guess what? They probably got 30 mixtapes behind them. Yep. Like my favorite artist, Kevin Gates, when he first came up, everyone's like, where'd this guy come from? And if you look back at his stuff, he's been making music since like 2007. Yep. And he didn't make it until 2015. That's almost 10 years of work. 
yep. I'm sitting in his and you know what? House. It's so funny. It's like that that whole thing. It's the um, reticular activation is when you see something and you associate, and then you see it all the time. It's kind of like when you see this overnight success thing when something catches and who knows why yeah like who knows in what moment something caught yeah but it does yeah and it, like things going viral like mm -hmm. i've seen things that were awesome and brilliant there was a facebook post recently and it was a dude and i forgot his name but he created he took the friends theme song and he did uh, it in a minor tune and yeah. it was so good yeah and I'm, I'm like man this didn't go viral this is weird because this is so dang good yeah and then i've seen the stupidest crap yep and then they're on the news i'm like why did that resonate with people like why just super interesting well, it's funny because now that we're so like the, i love these tangents because it's such different topics every like 10 minutes but it's amazing the with that like i think what happens is a lot of people like will purposely do something to become viral and it doesn't work because people can tell that you did it to get that viral hit yeah they can tell you wanted those shares they can tell that you are being fake like with Logan Paul, he's a good example because I hated him for like the longest time until he started that podcast or until that whole thing happened where he filmed himself in the suicide force oh, right. and everybody just like completely Freak. shut him down. Like he literally was shut to silence for two months because everyone was just going crazy on him. And then when he came back, I think he had this moment of like, what is the purpose of what I'm doing? Because he was vlogging every single day. Right. And if you look back on his vlogs at that time, it was so cringy fake. Yeah. Like, there's no person behind that. You look at him on the screen and you're like, who even, is he a robot? Right. Like, there's no actual soul back there. And now that he's come to this whole uh, 360 where he's doing podcasts and sitting down for long periods of time and actually, like, speaking and letting himself yeah, be a person. Yeah, expressing himself, right. I'm like, wow, I actually really like this kid. Yeah. And it's weird because you go from one extreme to the next because someone goes from... I need to make the viral hit to I'm going to be myself and hope it works. Right. And that's what I think Gary Vee talks about a lot is stop trying so hard yeah. to be this person. Just be you. Just, and yeah. if people like you, they're going to like you. If they don't, well, you yeah. weren't made for the internet. You weren't made to be famous. Well, and there's things like, you know, I'm much better at sitting here and doing the podcast because I'm so freaking vain and self-conscious about being on video. Video is not my thing. Yeah. It doesn't resonate well. You know, I'm a better, probably a better writer and speaker than I would be a mm -hmm. videographer or, you know, a vlog yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. And I think that it's being, being okay with who you are. Yeah, self-awareness. And self -awareness. Where what, what, your, what your place is. Self-awareness is, is right. huge. Because yeah. I think also a lot of times nowadays, everybody wants to be the CEO. Everybody wants to be the number one. I can look at myself and say, I don't know if I'd be the best number one, but I bet you I could be an excellent number two. Yeah. I bet you I can be the best support yep. system a number one's ever had. Yep. I bet you I can be the greatest hand holder that ever, anyone's ever seen. Like, I can help guide you to that, but I don't know if I'm the number one. Right. And that's all self-awareness. That's all right. like, do I think I have what it takes to spend all those time, all those nights literally sitting up and, and focusing and being the only person that's there to be the fallback? Right. Because at the end of the day, like with the number one, when it all falls down, it's on the number one. Well, and that is very, very true. And that's, that is a unique, um, strength that you have to have when, uh, at the end of the day, there is no backup yeah. to like, ultimately it is your responsibility, no matter what, yeah. no matter who did what it is ultimately your responsibility. And, and that's cause you, you created it to be self-aware. Cause if yeah. you, if every single person in this world thought they could be a number one, there would be more failing businesses out there than we've ever seen. Right. Because and there's a the, lot. The truth is there's not everybody's meant to be number one. No. There's a lot of people out there that would suck at it. <laughs> there's a lot of people who do suck and at it. And they're trying to do it so hard and then their dreams get crushed. And it's like if right. you were just a little more self-aware, you might have saved yourself all that hurt. Yeah. Because like for me, the reason I think that about myself is because I just don't know if I have the gut to be that leader in business. Because, you know, it takes a lot. Yeah. Business is not friendly. Business nope. is not happy well, handholding. We've talked about this, that the world, society, doesn't appreciate introversion yes. or shyness. And I am both of those things. And it, being introverted is one thing. Like, you can be outgoing. I'm right? an so outgoing it's, introvert. So it's not, uh, it's not the introversion, because I'm a big-time introvert. I need my recharge time, and I cannot be around people for too long, or mm -hmm. I get real ornery. Yeah. It's kind of like getting hangry. Yep. I get like you're in my space ornery, Back off. you know, <laughs> but, um, I think it's the, uh, oh, 
Did you lose it again? (laughs) This is becoming a humorous issue where it's like, and this is a topic. (laughs) Why does it happen? Why does the brain have a thought that's clear? And then it shuts it off. You get into the thought and it literally locks it down. Like it is so It's like when you walk into another room with a purpose and then you get to the room and you're like, wait. And see, now it's bad to me. I I do that all the time. I will literally walk into a room and be like, there was a reason for me to be here. And now I have no idea. (laughs) I mean, and it's not even like sort of there. It's like it ran out my ear. It ran away. Like I go get it. I'm trying to go get it. Oh my gosh. We are messy on this set today. No, it's like you, you go in for a stapler and you get there. You're standing in front of the stapler and you're like, why am I here? And then you walk back to your project and you're sitting there for, oh, the stapler. Which (laughs) now leads me to the point of what I was saying that, um, you know, we've talked about how society doesn't (laughs) celebrate shyness. Like it chews it up and spits it out. We, and it's, uh, that also speaks to ageism, right? You know, like we're, our core business being in the, the business started with um, helping people with disabilities and then really focusing on communication and hearing loss. And that's, Uh, often more often than not an age-related issue although that's changing with noise and such but the idea that we're so and i know it i am like i am in that category now where i walk by a mirror i'm like god bless it there's another freaking wrinkle that i've got like a river that's running across my forehead i got a freaking butt crack in the middle (laughs) of my eyeballs that wrinkles so deep and it's disturbing and it's one of those things where i know better yeah it's not you know it's like i earned the, the wrinkles, yeah. you know, I've earned some of the, and looking at it that way, like I've earned some yeah. of the stress reaction, you know, that my body's gone, yeah. oh girl, yeah, so that stress, that's made your face all wrinkly. <laughs> you know, I, I have earned that to some extent, but society doesn't look at it as a mark of achievement. Yeah. It's like you're old and you're becoming, and this is just, it sounds harsh, but it's the truth. It's, it's like we, we say the words that we don't think this, but we think it. And that is that it's like you're old and you're getting worthless, right? Instead of saying you're old and you own so much knowledge. That's weird that you say that though, because I don't feel that way. Like when I look at someone with age, like Nana and Papa, I think they've earned their wisdom. They've earned their right to well, like that's awesome. finally relax. But that I might be unique in that sense. But I don't look at people of older age and think that's sad. I well, look you, at them and think, oh my gosh, they lived a wonderful long life. Like I wonder what everything they've done in their life I is. I may be generalizing, but it, you know, you pick that up when you're in the store, for example, you're yeah, in a grocery yeah, yeah. store and you're, you're, you know, you see people that are behind an older couple or an older person and they're oh, like yeah. getting real nasty and, and annoyed, and or annoyed like, that they're, that they're moving so slowly. Yeah. And it's like, What's got you in well, such you know a what, freaking though, I rush? I think that that's a very in the moment type of thing. Like, I don't mm-hmm. necessarily think that people who act like that really believe at the end of the day that people who are elderly are sad or like they're annoyed by them. Now, if you are someone that gets angry by old people, I'm kind of like feel sorry for you because like you right. got an issue there. But like, I think a lot of people in the moment think to themselves, I'm being inconvenienced right now. So I'm going to act like this is the end of the world. Right. And it's like, if you really st- take a step back and look at it as what it is, it's like, you're not being inconvenienced. That person is literally like twice your age and lived twice your life. And they're having trouble moving from point A to point B. And you're standing there thinking how right. selfish, like, oh, these old people are stopping me from getting to where I need to be. And I bet you the second that you sit down where you needed to be, you're thinking like, wow, I was a jerk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's I hope weird. That's like, true. I think it's weird right. when people look at old people and say like, ew, I hate old people. Like, how, right. what? Like, yeah. you came from. Yeah. And you're going to be, by yeah, the like, way. Yeah, like, it's so like, weird. Like, karma's a bitch. Well, maybe you know? also because I've worked, like, I had the experience with Papa's, I worked for my Papa's nonprofit in um, nursing homes. And that was, like, a whole eye-opener and a half. Mm-hmm. There was one guy, and I remember, this is probably the most, like, I had to walk out of the room and cry. Because my mom's a marathon runner. She's sitting in front of me, and I'm talking as if she's, I'm not talking to her. But she's a marathon runner. And I walked in this guy's room. And he was, he wasn't old. He was probably about 55. And he had come down with, what is the disease where your your muscles deteriorate? And Muscular dystrophy? Yes. So MS? he was in the final stages of MS. Mm. And he was so weak and like he couldn't move. He looked like, um, he the body he had looked like a 13-year-old shriveled up like skinny body. Yeah. 
on an, a like 55 year old's head and he couldn't talk he couldn't move at all but i saw in his eyes i looked him so deep in the eyes his whole room was covered in all of his marathon medals uh. he had a huge poster of him he ran a japan marathon and it was like this awesome poster with all these like signatures or whatever and i think it was the last marathon or something and i looked at him and i just could not help myself i had to run out of the room and cry because i was like this man is trapped in yeah. this body that he did not ask for he is now stuck laying in this bed looking at his accomplishments and i yeah. think like how could somebody think of someone like that as being right. less than them or right. being annoying or being right. inconvenienced like that guy lived a whole life and now he's got to pass on in a way that is so Oh, like yeah. it just hurt me so bad, especially with seeing the mar- marathon medals yep. and the guy can't even walk or speak now. Yeah. And it was just like a whole, whoa, so then that, that, that kind of circles back to one of the things we touched on earlier, which is about spirituality and yeah. where people lose their faith and like, why? Yeah. Like why? Would why? That happen what, to him? what is, what's the point? Like why? Mm-hmm. And, and you have to believe but at one, least this is the way I feel like in, in having faith and having a belief in God is that there is, there's more to it. Yeah. There's way more. Th- this isn't an intended punishment. Well, Maybe he had done everything that God had intended for him to do. The, he had like 12 or 13 medals. Like he mm-hmm. had done a lot of stuff. Yeah. It wasn't like he lived a life of doing nothing. His accomplishments were all around the room. And maybe even in the moment, like he touched you. Oh, right. I, we so, our souls spoke to each other. Like I looked him in the eyes, and I was just like, he couldn't speak. But like it was the weirdest experience for me because I've never yeah, met the guy. I right. don't know his name to this day. I spent maybe five minutes in his yeah. room, but the connection from his eyes to mine, the it was just something I'll never forget. And Isn't I that interesting? could that, not handle it. Like, I had to run out. And that's then, the whole thing. Like yeah. our souls sit behind yes, our eyes. Yes. They sit there uh-huh. and y- you can look at somebody and you know, it's, have you ever, have you ever had an experience where you, you, you cross paths like that mm-hmm. where you're like, whoa, yeah, they just passed me some energy. Like, yeah. whoa. Yeah. And then you've crossed paths with people. You're like, I've got to get out of here yes. and I got to get That's out of here negative now. That's energy. Yeah. Yeah. Like you felt so repelled. You had to move quickly oh, out. Oh, yeah. It's really interesting how when you're in tune, you know, that that's very much the case. Oh, I thought the shut off. Ooh, good. Well, we're already at almost an hour, so we'll... And we about have 500 so, tangents man. deep. <laughs> but, love, but like you said, I love conversations like that because it's like the whole intent of this is like we're just sitting and chit-chatting, whether it be over a cocktail or a cup of coffee. How that happens, like you naturally just find mm-hmm. all these, you know, things to talk about. And it's a lot of stuff people think about, so... Oh, yeah, it is. Um one of the things I definitely want to touch on in future conversations is regret because we're we're kind of ending on the note of getting older yes and our souls Mm -hmm. and all that but you know the whole idea that we've got this little period of time on the planet on when we're in this body this capsule that moves us around and that what we get what we do and the impact we have and how we want to wrap it you know at the end of our lives Uh what's what's like we it's not our plan yeah that's the thing the one thing that the hardest thing i think to accept is that it isn't our plan yeah right but that once that plan has completed yeah like what you knowing when you close your eyes for the last time that there's nothing that you regret yeah and i don't know that it's possible because you know everyone has a little bit of it but i think it's a good conversation to have like how to avoid allowing yourself Massive. yourself to right. get in your own way right. to leave you with regret right because there's a lot of things that play a factor in regret yeah and i think one of those things is stopping yourself from doing something or not doing something because right. of a in the moment feeling or thought that will then lead you to a lifelong journey right. of regret right that's it's avoiding one. discomfort that I think probably takes us to yes. regret most often where 100%. it's like, I'm going to avoid this because it's easier to avoid than to, to Face, live yeah. than be uncomfortable for a minute. 
And when we live, when we take that step into discomfort, sometimes the greatest things happen. Yep, 100%. So on that note, folks, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for listening and or watching, possibly. We didn't record this one for YouTube. Yeah, but sorry about that, Thank guys. you for listening. We are going to be running a little contest, which is going to be fun, which we will announce. Um, and we're going to do some other fun stuff. But definitely share. We, we love just, you know, this is more about... Um, sharing just great conversation getting to know each other yeah and if you found this interesting definitely share it and subscribe that would be fantastic and so with that we wish you a very very wonderful day a wonderful week this is michelle allman and alex allman with the red notebook and have a fantastic day and find us on podbean at the red notebook and youtube at clear digital media and we will talk to y'all later Bye. bye